When you Google the top 10 signs of a psychopath, the first result you receive is Narcissus of another level. Psychopaths take self-love very seriously. And I can't think of any example of a creator who fits this description like the topic of today's video. A story of a furry VTuber who in a depraved narcissistic ego trip made the equivalent of a mini cult for his community. The person behind such description is Garo Shadowscale. Garo Shadowscale, otherwise known as Garo, is a furry VTuber popularizing and gaming content targeted at a younger audience. To give you a brief description of the content, it's the exact content you expect to see from a content creator targeted at a younger audience. Loud, high-pitched, and fast-moving to keep the attention of childlike minds. As an example of this, I will play you a video clip which for your sake I have turned down. Despite the simple nature and cookie cutter gaming compilation, this would only be the surface level of the true person behind the avatar. As many stories about depraved losers originate, I will be beginning this story with Discord. Specifically the Gara Shadowscale Discord server. This is the whereabouts of this so called borderline cult as the internet has portrayed it as. When entering the server, you are obviously greeted with the server rules. The best way to describe these server rules is to just present you with them. First off, server rules apply in all of these cases. You know, standard stuff so far. Do not friend request or target other wigglies. Of course, we're playing together and there will be conversations and cooperation, but keep it at a minimum about other wigglies. Wigglies clearly being the term for the fanbase. Strange choice, but it's not my place to critique names here. As you can see, by his own words, members are not allowed to befriend other members. And even during calls, which you can join, it is looked down upon to begin conversation with another member in any sense. It is permitted, but excessive communication is not allowed. How excessive talking is even judged or a crime to begin with is beyond my comprehension. Garo insists that conversation must be kept on him, at him, and always about him. You may be wondering if this rule is enforced, and I'll be getting to those cases later, don't worry. But we will continue down the line of rules to demonstrate the extent of Garo's egotism. Also, thread requesting or playing together in games like VR Chat, Among Us, etc. together when I'm not hosting it are not allowed. Of course, my Minecraft and Terraria servers are perfectly fine to game with each other on, just don't organize group activities without me, even if it's just with one other Wiggly. This paragraph continues to demonstrate the control of interaction between these so-called Wigglies, with the most lenient rule being that they can play on their allocated Minecraft and Terraria servers, although this is only to be done on the Garo Shadowscale own and run servers, showing that Garo's egotism extends to controlling how you interact with other members in any sense on or off the discord platform. Ending the paragraph with, and, as always, keep the focus on myself and my content. Which makes everything I've said just more blatant. King Garo sees it that you must always be focused on him, and only him. Truly some of the most narcissistic things I've seen from a YouTuber just ever, although controlling stems further than that. The majority of what I've addressed is how he controls your interactions with others. Now this is how he controls your own freedoms. Although, as mentioned in server rule number one and in my Patreon disclaimer, active streamers slash YouTubers cannot claim these rewards or even be in my server. If at any point you start streaming or making YouTube vids, you will lose your rewards and you will be removed from my server. Therefore, any user with a large social media presence is not allowed into the server and if an attempt is made by a user existing in the server, they will not only be shunned by Garo and will not receive any sympathy or praise, but will be removed from the server and essentially ostracized from the community. Not only this, but in more server rules you can see the clarification of, do not mention your own or anyone Anyone else's stream, server, etc. The operative words being anyone else's, is not only can you not have a social media life, but nor are you allowed to mention the existence of any other social media user according to the rules. Ironically, if you look at rule 3, there is a rule of no toxicity and keeping a positive and humble environment. The absolute obliviousness and hypocrisy when writing the words stay humble directly after no talking to anyone about anything other than me is just staggering. And again as a final rule, encouraging the enforcement of all the previous rules to be enforced server wide. I would also like to quickly mention rule number
number 5 about no fetish or kink related content as this will act as foreshadowing for later drama. Also in the same rule we see no OC or stoner artwork is allowed. So in a furry server you're not allowed to mention your persona I guess. Alright, sure. So just with the context I've shown you so far, you can see how Garo attempts using his platform to control, and I say that word a lot, but there's no better way to put it. He tries to control his audience, and has the audacity and the goal to command those who support and enjoy his content into a pure obsession, and demand those to keep all the attention onto him. And anyone who steps outside of this line gets kicked. But to move on from there, I have yet to show you how these rules are enforced and the ways in which Garo acts when someone is caught breaking the rules that are absolutely fair and balanced. Totally not manipulative and controlling by any stretch of the imagination. To begin on the messaging app, Telegram leaked DMs would surface with a fan who broke said rules. On your screen now, I provided three screenshots, all of which are towards a fan of the channel. To spare you some time, I will not read all of these messages out loud, but will summarize each one with Garo's motive behind them. In the first screenshot, Garo demands that a server member, who had developed a friendship with a moderator of the server, must be kicked from the server and to cut ties with said moderator on all platforms. His reasoning for the ban is that he is quote extremely dangerous and that his involvement in the server will be dangerous and that is where Garo is most vulnerable. Garo makes the claims that the member will be changing the moderator and directing his attention away from him and his content and that a quote incredibly powerful connection going behind Garo's back was causing him immense stress. Then attempting to manipulate the member into cutting ties and even making the end comment that he may need to stress and rules to minimize the risk of such event occurring again. Continuing on, the second screenshot describes how the moderator was just beginning to behave to the rules and was improving according to Garo's standards. That the member posed a risk to all of this and would cause all of the moderator's obedience to unwind. According to Garo, he allegedly spent two nights on call, essentially trying to manipulate the moderator on how to behave and keep all the attention towards him. He also states that he does this with the other mods as a way to preserve Preserve the server atmosphere. In the third screenshot, he describes how he broke it down point by point to the moderator on how such a relationship and bonding with a server member would be dangerous to the server, just showing how Garo would manipulate his moderators into complete obedience. Ending the third screenshot with the comment of, watching him turn was like watching God bleed, a phrase that one could say is extreme for the situation. As we can see here, Garo will stop at no end to continue this hug box of a community where he thinks he deserves constant attention, and he will emotionally abuse those to achieve that narcissistic goal. The actual person featured in these screenshots provided a statement on Twitter where he gives context to why Garo attacked him. To summarize, Garo and this fan were friends for a long time, stretching back to before Garo had put in place rules enforcing wigglies to not contact one another or communicate with moderators. As rules began to change and Garo became more strict, this fan became fed up with Garo's behavior. The fan specified one rule which was put in place quite early that made it so you are unable to post any artwork that didn't include Garo. This fan would then vent his frustrations to two of the moderators of the server who were also mutual friends of Garo. One of the moderators would then show Garo what the fan had been saying and how the fan didn't like the way Garo was treating his audience and Garo would begin his tirade in the telegram chats. Garo would then ban this person and talk to the moderators about cutting ties with the fan. One of the moderators didn't and the other only did temporarily, eventually also growing tired of Garo's bullshit and returning to talk with the fan again. So in every way possible this completely backfired in Garo's face. And I have further evidence that Garo's insecurities continued outside punishment of the rules, and to merely those wishing him well and even those who gave praise to him. In this scene, Fan1 played by Red Blob reaches out to Garo with the message, been showing up to most of the Twitch streams, played marbles bunch of times, my Twitch name is, username, sorry you've had so much issues with your tech, hee <laughs> hee. The acting in this scene feels very naive and I get the impression that the actor is very young. That's when the main antagonist of the fairy tale, Lord Farquaad, aka Garo Shadowscale, steps into the scene with the lines, you came on, then a bunch of dates, for a total of 2 hours and 10 minutes watch time. That's not even a full duration of a single stream. I see you sending lots of messages but they seem to be condensed within short time bursts. Your low watch time suggests that you're just coming and going rather than leaving the stream open when 
when you can't be active. Due to all that, you do not qualify for regular status. You'll have to do better, much better. And again, to give you more evidence this dude just craves attention, check out these DMs sent to a dude who was just celebrating his birthday. Gara opens with a simple, Hey Zach, I hope you had a good birthday. Standard stuff. Just remember to keep the attention slash focus on myself and my server slash stream. It really felt like you were pushing your birthday topic and gift topic a bit too much. Then when you were mentioning that you couldn't post a pic, it really felt like you were baiting for a gift sub or for DMs to ask about your gift. Don't do that again alright. Garo. You're a piece of shit. This is just sad to see someone so depraved that they would shame a person for celebrating a birthday too harshly. Harshly enough that God forbid someone may DM them about said birthday. There is really no excuse for acting in such a pitiful and aggressive manner towards these individuals. It's extreme narcissistic behaviour, and the term cult that was used to describe his community, whilst usually hyperbolic, still holds some merit. It's a community where a group is forced to submission and obedience towards a particular person, and when they ignore this rule, they are removed from said group and are not allowed re-entrance. Despite it not being as serious as a real cult who inflicts real world physical harm upon people, the higher power in this case Garo still shows a power hungry, narcissistic and frankly just a dick who controls his fanbase. Which I remind you is children. So what is it like to deal with this man? What lengths must be taken in order to message dare I say speak to such a status? Well, there's an answer to that, and that's where I must direct you to Patreon. See, Garo does allow us mortals to speak with him, although this is done through a paywall by getting charged a monthly fee to receive certain benefits such as speaking to the man himself. See, the way Patreon works is there are levels of tiers you can choose from, where you donate to a creator a certain amount of money per month, much like a subscription, and in return, a list of benefits will be chosen by the creator. That's where Garo's tiers come into play, where we see lower tiers which offer these certain benefits, but where many found issues, and where I will draw your attention to, are the higher and more expensive tiers. For the low, low price of $250 per month, you can receive the Owo tier, which also comes with benefits. We see some basic ones such as guaranteed spots in servers like Minecraft, Terraria and Among Us servers, there's a 15% discount on merch, a Steam friend request and early ad free videos. Although all of which was available to the tiers below it, such as the love tier for $100 and some of the butt tier for $25. Then we get to the headline prizes, what we are really looking forward to from this tier. You receive a 20 minute discord call, a single discord message once a day, a VRChat selfie, and finally a virtual hug on VRChat. Which I remind you again for the people in the back, that is $250 per month, $3000 per year to receive these perks. If that isn't enough for you, there is an extra tier on top of this that sells for even higher. For a total of $500 per month, you get an extra 20 minute VR chat session and get this one extra Discord message. Now you have two Discord messages. Then everything else is the exact same, all the way down to the hug, the obvious and most vital part. Going without saying, the amount of cost for just the most basic of privileges is borderline disgusting. Charging the amount Garo charges for his Patreon tiers is not not just unnecessary, but shows how highly he thinks of himself. Charging 500 bucks to give him a hug over a fucking VR chat. If you were curious, which I'm sure you were, clips of him giving these hugs are available for your viewing pleasure. Or more accurately, displeasure cause this dude sucks. Now I want you to take a second to think to yourself, what do you think this clip looks like? Well, I'll show you, and this is one of the most cult like shit I've ever seen and it makes it 10 times funnier that it's done virtually using furry avatars on VR chat. One moment. So. Satoshi, big I say Precious Wiggly, thank you so much for being a low tier patron. I love it, appreciate you so, so much at Precious Wiggly. That makes me super duper happy to see. And don't forget, you can send me at least a DM every day and I will respond. Uh, you are guaranteed that as per your rewards. And also, I didn't forget that you're saying Friday would be a good time for the private call. Uh, Fridays are usually a bit rough for me, but I think I can do it. If not, then we can definitely reschedule it, but it will happen, of course. But I love you lots at Precious Satoshi Wiggly. Thank you for your support and love. You mean so much to me at Precious Wiggly. I'm so happy to have you in my life every single day. Some 
something about this clip is really off-putting. He goes around rushing through these people and in a total of 2 minutes and 5 seconds lines up all the Patreon donators and just runs through them like that. The way he talks through them just real quick comes off as lazy and ungrateful. The whole clip is really creepy to me. I skipped over most of it for the sake of time but you can still get a good glimpse of the practices that are made in this weird hugging tradition. During the clip he almost goes over a sort of script where he announces each person's specific tier. Overall it's a really bizarre watch. I'll leave a link to the full clip in the description for you to check out after the video if that's what you want. What I get from this clip is that Garo is desperate for his audience's money and the way he does this is quite concerning. He manipulates those from his audience into obsession as we looked at earlier and then profits off of that obsession by capitalizing on it via Patreon. Awarding those who pay Garo large amounts of money by allowing them higher prestige amongst his community. Which brings us back to the cult analogy. We have a person who demands constant attention from those in his audience by threatening them with bans and ostracization from the community, demanding constant attention and the prohibiting of starting your own personal life on YouTube or some other social media platform, then further requires fans to fork over large amounts of personal wealth in order to be in the presence of who they have been manipulated to obsess over. It's a real shady business tactic and shows Garo's pure narcissism and greed. Overall, Garo is the perfect embodiment of these two characteristics and it nearly feels unavoidable to be able to excuse such. You might be able to see where this is going. In a now unlisted video, Gara made an apology to his YouTube channel. To say it was a train wreck would be an understatement. To begin, this is only 3 minutes and 42 seconds long, not near long enough to constitute the drama I've been over. In the video, Gara mentions some of the topics I talked about in this video, so we'll respond to each one as quickly as possible. Gara first begins by talking about his audience, which he states is not full of of minors. To prove this statement he brings up YouTube analytics. Many of you familiar with the platform will already understand the problem here. YouTube analytics are quite well done, I'll admit it. Although the section where it talks about your audience's age is extremely misleading for a variety of reasons. As you would have known when you make a YouTube account, you are asked to provide your age without any ID. Meaning anyone can enter any age. And it is increasingly likely for kids to do this, so if a video becomes age restricted, they are able to avoid this restriction by lying about their age. Also, the device the child users may cause an inaccurate result. If a child uses a device that is signed in via their parents account, it will record the age of the maker of the account. So this data point is invalid and Gara's argument makes no sense. I already went over in the beginning of the video the type of content Gara makes and it is evident that this content is made for kids. Second, Gara pulls up his Patreon and the only excuse he makes for the prices is that it is optional. Quote, it is 100% up to personal choice. He also shares the same reaction to his Discord rules, stating that they are quote, There are tons of other servers, Patreons, streamers, and YouTubers. But please, don't harass my server members for choosing to be here. Garo, we know that there are other YouTubers who are doing the right thing. That's not the conversation here. We are talking about your rules and what you are doing wrong. Saying that people just don't have to join if they don't want to doesn't avoid from the fact that your rules actively force those in your community into obedience and you lash out at people over the slightest mistake. There could be no one on your server and you would still be a narcissist expecting that people should worship you in in such a way. Garo, you are an absolute degenerate, and a bit of a pussy too. Nice unlisted apology, and I like how you sorted through the comments to delete the bad ones. You command an army of children who obsess over you in your fan base and use them for profit. Normally I would be able to partially excuse a Patreon price like this, but with the context of what this person is like, it paints a picture of just how they think about themselves and how they use their platform. At least the ones who stick to just watching the YouTube content are safe, right? Right? The video isn't over yet. You see, when looking at Garo's YouTube, there is a disturbing pattern of videos which show a more risque side of his content. You see, on his channel, there are many topics that you would see across kids' YouTube, such as bug snacks or endings, or top 10 Minecraft shaders. Isn't that nice? I'm sure kids would love this stuff. Then we get to the point where things go off the rails a bit. I would also like to take the time to ask everyone who knows me watching this, do not sound clip anything I'm about to say next. Thank you. 
I rode a gay dragon. I gave him my dragon noodle. He ruined my back door. I changed into a submissive fairy. Would you like me to stop now? I'll happily stop now. I think you get the idea. And yes, the game he is playing is an adult-only fairy dating simulator. In other words, he is playing adult games to his audience of kids. These videos mention not being an isolated case. Along with more examples of the content I just showed you, there are also some more fetishy oriented content that, to be honest, let's just move on. No need to question anything suspicious here. Videos like this shouldn't be shown to your minor audience. No one is protected here. They're either in a furry cult or watching goo porn. And just so everyone is clear, just like rule number 5 on the Discord server, there is to be no NSFW or fetish content. No fetish content, you say? This pattern of behaviour still continues and these videos are still up on his channel to this day. It's a large red flag to see a kid's content creator push the theme of adult content and adult fetishes onto the audience in their content. An ongoing problem in his videos that should be addressed. And Garo may need to kick up the ass in order to realise how broken YouTube statistics are in the age section, or more likely he knows this and is choosing to avoid it. I think I've demonstrated enough just what this dude is like. If this video interested you, subscribe or whatnot. Show this video to your grandma so she stops watching Garo's content. Grandma, you kinky bitch. I'll see you losers next time and I'ma leave Garo to be ruler of Duloc. Peace.